Have you guys ever wondered why certain exercises happen in the order that they do? Or why athletes will work on their power or their speed before hitting their main lifts? Well, today we're gonna to be jumping into exercise order and a few key concepts that will help you get more out of your training and help you avoid potential injury, potential over fatigue or overwork, and get you stronger in the process. So, we're gonna be jumping into a little bit of a whiteboard session here. This is a little different than all the other videos that we've done. But what we do wanna focus in on is explaining a few of these key concepts that you may have heard me use in several videos uh, in the past on the podcast, talking to Dave. A few of these concepts that I think I need to do a better job of explaining to you. So first and foremost, what we're gonna be going over today is when you are trying to determine the order at which you pick your exercises for a training session, these are the key concepts you wanna focus in on. First and foremost, understanding what stability is. I'm sure you've heard me say it, you've heard Dave say it, talking about internal or external stability, but what the hell does that mean? Stability in its most simplest form, or its most simplest terms, refers to your ability to resist force, right? So in our particular situation when talking about exercise order and exercises in general, we need to break it up into internal versus external stability, right? So internal stability is your body's own ability to resist force. So think of a brace, think of your positioning, think of a barbell back squat, right? The only thing stabilizing that weight is your body and your ability to maintain positions and your main and ability to maintain the skill and efficiency of the movement. On the other side is external stability. Think about a leg press, right? It's a machine that's on a track that all you have to do is sit in, it locks you in the position you need to be in, and all you have to worry about is exerting force. So stability basically means is either you are controlling the weight, you are controlling the, out, uh, the outcome of the exercise, you are maintaining the positions on your own, utilizing your own internal methods, or external, there's something supporting you. It can be, you can be holding on to something. Like I said, it can be a machine. Understanding those two things and understanding stability as a whole is a really, really key factor to understanding why certain exercises go before others, right? So in terms of stability, what we wanna do is at the beginning of a training session, right? When we're the freshest, when we have the most capacity to do work, we need to really focus in on the internally stabilized exercises. Those are your jumps, those are your throws, those are your power, that's your speed. It's the things that require our next key concept, skill, right? So along with internal and external stability, we need to focus in on skill and output, right? What I refer to as skill is again, kind of in line with that internal stability, is your ability to maintain positions, your ability to keep good form your ability to control your positions under the weight, uh, under that load, whatever that may be, from an internal sense, right? So thinking about skill versus output, output is jumping on a leg press, jumping on a hack squat, jumping on a, a chest supportive row, jumping on any sort of real machine where again, you have that stability externally that you can just put that hammer down and really, really put some effort in. You'll see in a lot of the train your ass footage, train your ass off footage, not train your ass footage, that's weird. Train your ass off footage. When we start to kind of kick the asses of the people that are in those groups, we're always using an externally stabilized means. What I mean by that is again, they're in a position where the form or their skill to do the movement is not the limiting factor. The limiting factor is gonna be their uh, ability to actually exert force. So we get closer and closer to muscular failure when we use an externally stabilized means. Finally, the key, last key concept, and it falls in line with the other two, is the idea of practice versus training. See, we practice an internally stabilized skill. See how everything's kind of in line here? So we practice a skill and we train output. I know it's kind of confusing and can be kind of convoluted here, but the idea is pretty simple. If you are doing something at the beginning of your workout, if you're beginning, beginning of your training session, make sure it's more skill-based. Make sure it's something that's requiring more cognitive effort. Make sure it is requiring more internal stability or your ability to maintain those positions on your own without those external means. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to mitigate fatigue. At the beginning of a training session, you're going to have less fatigue than you will at the end of the training session. So for example, 
if you are an athlete and you want to do jumps and you want to do throws and you want to do sprints, you should do those at the beginning of the training session, right? Because they require the most skill. They require the most cognitive effort and they require you to maintain certain positions on your own without that external means. At the end of a session, if you want to crush your legs, jump on a leg press, jump on a hack squat. Um, if you want to get some uh, work in on a, I don't know, like a pec fly or something, right? Something where, again, your ability to maintain that position is not the limiting factor. So what we have here is kind of a rough breakdown of how I would program or have an exercise order based on the key concepts that we went over in this video. Again, at the top of the workout, at the top of the training session, I always have some sort of warm up or mobility or stability work that uh, we can kind of work on a lot of these skills. But again, power, throws, jumps, sprints, put those at the beginning of the training session because those require you to develop the skill, develop that um, ability to maintain those positions over the course of time, which at the end of a training session, your jumps and throws, you're not going to be able to put as much effort or as, as much focus into those exercises as you would at the beginning of the training session. And there's a little asterisk here because a lot of people don't necessarily do jumps and throws, especially for strength athletes. So what I would say is doing your main movement. It's higher up on the practice internal skill and output external train sort of a, a diagram here. The reason is because if you're a power lifter, your sport is the main lift. Your sport is the bench, the squat, and the deadlift, right? So those are your sport specific skills. And what we wanna do is at the beginning of the training session, we want to put you in a position where you can get the most skill work in, where you practice those lifts, where you practice the skill of those lifts over the course of time. And therefore, you're ingraining that pattern, ingraining your ability to perform those lifts more and more efficiently and be able to work on technique, right? That's not saying that you won't go heavy. That's not saying that you won't push the envelope here and there. But the idea is you wanna put the stuff at the top of your workout that you need to work on the most and that requires the most internal stability, most skill, and most practice. As we go down this list, we jump onto this supplemental. As you can see, it's starting to be a little bit more in the middle. A little bit of skill, but starting to push a little bit more into the output, right? So that's when you get into your sets of five, sets of eight, whatever that is. Um, <clears throat> if you, for example, as a supplemental lift, if you were doing floor presses, right? Think about the amount of stability you would need with a floor press versus if your main movement for the, for the day was heavy dumbbells, right? So that's a good example of that internal versus external stability. If you're doing a floor press, you have that floor to help you stabilize. You have that bar, which is a little bit more stable than dumbbells on their own. If your main movement was heavy dumbbells, that's requiring more stability, internal stability through that shoulder joint, through your core, through your whole torso, more so than that floor press. So as you can see, as we go down, we jump into accessories, right? So this is where you can hit your machines. This is where you can hit your Brian Carroll likes to call it like fluff and buff stuff. Um, essentially, that's where you're wanting to get that output. That's where you want to start kind of building some tissue. That's where you want to really start focusing on the muscles as opposed to the movements. I know Dave has always mentioned this. At the top of your training session should be the movements and at the bottom should be worried about training the muscles specifically. So that's where you do that, right? So you can jump on, like I said, if you know your fatigue is starting to get a little high at the end of your training session, that's where you would stick the exercises such as machine work, such as stabilized uh, single leg work, right? So if you're holding on to something, lock yourself into a power rack and do single leg squats, right? Um, essentially anything that goes here, you need to start realizing that your fatigue is going to limit you. So you need to stabilize yourself as much as you can externally to get the most out of the exercises that you'll put as your accessories. So I know that was a lot. I know that was a, a ton of information, but the idea should be try to put yourself in a situation where you can think about your own training here. Think about the exercises you pick and where, right? The purpose of this is not to be convoluted and complicated. The purpose of this is for you, the viewer, uh, the athlete, whoever you may be, to be able to look through a different lens and to be able to better understand the training that you do and make better decisions based on what exercise to do when 
based on the intent of that exercise. Another thing that I should have put up here is that intent, right? If you're a power lifter, your main goal is to get stronger at the big three lifts. If you're a strong man, your main goal is to get better at the next contest you're gonna be doing. Understanding that what you put as an accessory works back up that chain to help support you in that skill work is an important concept to understand. And likewise, it goes the other way. What you work on as a skill needs to be supported by the rest of the training uh, sections or the training blocks, whatever you wanna call it, throughout the rest of your training session, not only for that day, but for that week, for that, for that block, for that whole training cycle. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions at all about training, drop them down below. I'll be taking a look to see if I can help you in any way possible. As always, if you have any questions on anything, just please send it to us. Thank you very much for supporting our videos, for watching the videos. Make sure you like, subscribe, do everything that you need to do to help share this video with more people. And hopefully this information will help you get more out of your training and help you better understand how you can self-auto-regulate to get the most out of what you do in the gym. So thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.